and I'll just set it for 11 minutes again. I don't know why 11, but anyway. Okay. Yeah, so, and this the same thing again, you know, after lunch, just feel into how you are. How do you feel? You want to be steady in the space that you're in and really occupying it. You know, this is your space now. And from there, you can more fully see what it is that you want to respond to, what you want to, you know, I think all of you have this kind of spark of wanting your own thing to happen. This is the thing. And we are all, you know, full of our own stuff. I mean, in a good way, like we have, we have, um, <laughs> Leila's thinking, what the hell are you talking about? Would you not just get on with painting? <laughs> but that thing of our colours need to shine. Each person's ones, you know, you have your own. Um, so so the, the thing I think that best allows you to access that is to tune into the physical body. Find yourself solid where you are and, you know, make your adjustments if you need to shift anything. Um, and as you're moving around and adjusting things, you'll be gradually kind of finding your way, settling, considering where you need things, having everything within easy reach. I want to have my paper towels there. Um, and if anyone has these brushes, I was saying to wet them all the way up to the metal brush and then just maybe touch, touch them on the paper towels so they're not dripping anymore. There's something about wetting the brush all the way to the metal bit that makes it leach the paint up in a more satisfying way rather than just wetting the tip. Okay, now, what'll happen now? Okay, <clears throat> so maybe I feel like I want to draw out some colour and, you know, bring some variations maybe into the face or something like that. But we'll see. <clears throat> Might just bring a bit of cerulean blue. I don't know if you're like me, but very often, as soon as I see something, I have to do the opposite thing to it. Um, pathological demand avoidance, I think it's called. Something like that, I don't know. But it's, uh, so, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Right, so, cerulean blue, I thought, might work for maybe something in the, the, the way the light is falling on the hair there. The cerulean blue goes a bit hard, and it's hard to lift it up again, but it looks like that. It's the lighter of the two blues. And I suppose having some blue in here will make me feel like I can warm up the face then, which is the opposite. You know, like when um, we were talking about that over at Duran, Andy and Denise, about when, when you bring the ultramarine dark into the hair, you may be inclined then to go for the lightest light in the skin. Um, and here I find that the blue the cerulean blue kind of gives me, you know, it, it makes sense of the warm colours here in the face, I think. <clears throat> you might just use a bit of ultramarine blue as well. Um, I think I want to kind of feel a bit excited in my belly myself and something that something different is going to happen. Or, I don't know, sometimes colour does it for you, like um, if you br bring something in that's um, that's a new colour. And I know some people have done this thing of bringing a bit of the carton colour in maybe. I might just try some of that. So I'm using the alizarin crimson into the middle there. And looking at the colour I'm aiming for it and making it kind of... And then um, I might just bring some into the background. And of course, you could as well turn it upside down. I think I said this before as well, you know, that if you want the runs and drips to go in a different direction. And, um, and I think the thing is to kind of make it your own somehow, you know, do something that will, and it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that, it, like, you're already doing that. But for me there, I was feeling a little bit like, oh, I'll just bring the eyes up a bit more. And actually, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put some colour in. And then, and then it can inform the liveliness and the, whatever you did do in the face after, you know. I think it can sometimes, um, Paul please said, make chance essential and do something that you're not always in control of. Let, it, let your painting kind of 
do something that you have to respond to, yeah, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, like, lose the edge of a thing. And, <clears throat> what was that? <laughs> yeah, great, well done, I stand in full support of that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a kind of a, it's an edge to navigate, isn't it? This like, oh my God, you know, but you want, you want to remain kind of steady, but at the same time, fresh. You don't want it to be a pedantic, regular thing that you, so there's a balance and then, you know, go, go, go easy on yourself. Be compassionate on yourself. I often say you want, you want to kind of, you want to cajole yourself along a little bit too, like, and then, and tell yourself how well you're doing and that you're grand and don't worry, it's fine. It'll all work out in the end, maybe. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. So you're able to play about in a kind of a life or death way without killing anyone. Like you can have that edge of um, excitement or something, you know. Um, And then sometimes I think when you do something with the face, you are inclined to go back in um, with a little bit more courage then. And you kind of think, okay, what will I do now to find ground again? Um, and maybe deepening the, the colours in the face, I suppose it could, you know, bring some warmth in there. I think I found that using the... It's a lot of yellow ochre. Using a little bit of yellow ochre with the cadmium red seems to be um, seems to be going for that colour at the moment. And if there's a bit of white coming through it, the white of the paper coming through it, um, I think that's quite a good colour to represent the the little bit of light on the skin. Or just to to up that um, warmth here and there. Um, and it might have been more. I was thinking the last time I did, made that mix was when I was looking at um, Ross really. So I'm wondering whether maybe it might be a little bit of a hint of burnt sienna here as well. To, but it is very close to that warm color. But I think a bit of burnt sienna gives more the feeling of Layla's um skin tone here and the forehead and then where the light is falling it might also almost have a cerulean blue hint to it the cool kind of um effect of the light now maybe bring in a little bit more burnt sienna and some fluidity and, and again kind of throw some onto the chest area maybe you know bring some and in other places, <clears throat> and over here too. Now there's a drip bit. I'm not gonna. If I touch that, it'll go all dark, and I want that to be a nice light bump on the cheekbone. <clears throat> okay. And then I guess what I could do is, um, in the last couple of minutes, maybe do a little bit more, um, explaining in that eye, just a little bit more. Leila, I wonder, would you be able to move that little bit of hair that's in front of your left eye just a tiny bit? Thanks a million. <clears throat> just a wee bit, that's fine. Your hair is gorgeous. Okay. <clears throat> I suppose because there's been some darks and colour going in out here, I want to redefine parts of the eye first. So I'll deepen the tone here. And again, you'd be doing it all over the face, but just for the purposes of painting the eye, I'm going to just kind of lift a little bit more of the contrast of the, the darkest part of the eyebrow there. And then dropping down for the iris. I think even although I can't really fully see it, I know that the pupil will be sitting there and that the iris will be almost, there'll almost be like a shadow overlapping the colored part of the eye that causes it to be darker as it enters into the lid. And then there's the second line of the, eyel the eyelash line the lid where it meets the socket of the eye that's, I would say, kind of parallel really to the um, 
eyelash line. And I'm just using a bit more burnt sienna mixed with the ultramarine blue so that it reads more as a warmish color to print on. And that's why I like using these brushes. You can print an edge. I'm just gonna see where it is now. Yeah, so it's parallel, I think, to the, um, I'm worried there's too much water in it. Parallel to the uh, eyelash line there, I think. You see, I leached off some water because I thought if it comes out too big, a, a, a bit of light there would be stuck. Um, and then, and when you hold it, you'd be surprised. Sometimes a lot of paint comes down the, comes down to the tip of the brush. And then there's the angle this way, which is shorter and steeper than this angle. And there's just maybe a touch of that that could emphasize that direction. You know, just where it, um, where it goes in. To, towards the corner and um, yeah and there's another thing it's not so visible here but so Lily you can stop thanks very much there's another thing it's not so visible here but sometimes you can paint the edge of the skin up to meet I'll do it here up to meet the the upper surface of the lower lid and again maybe because of um because of uh, Ross's hair we mightn't see the the line of of light that sits um, let me just try and show you what I mean so there's like a step in before you get to the iris. Oh, I've covered it. <coughs> so like here, you draw the, the dark of the skin up to meet the light that falls on the upper surface of the lower lid. Sometimes you can see that when you look around at each other, you can see that there's a step in. So that's something else. You want to sometimes find a way without doing too much work of explaining the parts of the eye with a little bit of detail. And that upper surface of the lower lid is a helpful thing and the shadow cast by the upper lid onto the iris is another thing that helps to give, I think, a little bit of depth and differentiation, kind of. Um, so, yeah. So, Lila, do you want to take like a five minute break just now? And then have your half an hour, and then you have your 10 minute break, or did you want, what do you want to do? Well, now I'm okay. Um... Okay. Oh, so you're happy to keep going, yeah, because it was oh. only 10 minutes. Okay, okay, so we'll just get back to, get down to work.